Well, speaking of one of those projects, one of these side projects that we kind of started around the, I guess, did we start this before the pandemic started? Is that right? Like, because we were all in person mm -hmm. for the first one. And then we, I, right? No. Am the, I, no. The, the we, first one was, we started putting it together before everything got That's about. right. Then you know, it shut down it and, and we did then, remotes. Yeah. Then we had to start with the, the first time was remote. Yeah. So what is Top Rope Tabletop? Go ahead. You uh, I mean, God, it's, it's, uh, it's a bunch of nerdy ass wrestlers and com color commentators. Uh, we, I forget who had the original post. It was either you or Bearcat. Uh, well, he, I no, I think he always wanted to do it. Yeah. Um, and he he was vocal about it. Yeah. And I kind of wanted to do it, but I wasn't. As and I always so wanted I to do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I wasn't really vocal, but as soon as he someone brought it up, I so I jumped in. So I think it was Keith. And so he popped. Like it was, it was originally like uh, just a Facebook post that Bearcat put out there. Like, do we want to do something? What 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 would a Dungeons and Dragons game with professional wrestlers look like? Mm -hmm. Justin um, and and myself are both veterans of top rope or top not top rope, uh, tabletop games. Um, you know, I've played several versions of D and D and some regular board games, and I'm also a huge fan of of streaming Dungeons and Dragons. There's multiple shows out there uh dimension 20 critical role critical role is one of the biggest shows they broke the kickstarter record for most money earned in a kickstarter to create an animated series based on their dungeons and dragons campaign so uh, throwing this around uh brohemoth wanted to take part uh tatiana wanted to take part um and so we threw together this this campaign uh where we we did tomb of the basilisk cult we all create characters. Um, I I create a bard, uh, Gideon, and uh, Connor or Justin create Connor, yes. and a human fighter, and uh, and we fought basilisks and all that jazz, and uh, and it was so successful they were like let's just make this a regular campaign, mm -hmm. and then Tyler Klein came on, and Tyler Klein is also a veteran of Dungeons and Dragons. Tati plays a lot. Uh, bro really wanted to learn and then the pandemic like we were playing on computers through roll 20 trying to you know facetime each other and deal with shitty internet and and we fought through it and we started shooting them in house in in the studio and last session we had a couple weeks ago um maybe a month ago three weeks or a month ago was probably the funnest thing. And, and Justin and bro couldn't mm -hmm. be there in studio, but it was still a blast. It was like, yeah. you guys were right there. Yeah. We were, it was the most synced enjoyable thing. I think I've done where we were just all vibing mm -hmm. and we were all just playing this game and having fun and, and just, laughing even, and even the campaign I'm, I'm using the correct terminology i say campaign but the episode for lack of a better term um before that mm -hmm. we uh we were having a blast you could see me and tony and tyler the whole time we're just like giggling like the little boys yeah like, I, it, it was and, too much too we actually talked over the microphones it was kind yeah. of bad <laughs> the mic yeah, was yeah. Like right here you could like hear us going <laughs> Yeah, we, 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 and then for, for me, it's been like, how do we produce this, right? Yeah. Like, how do we present this and, and, and kind of learning that along the way? So it's like, for, I mean, me personally, I, we're flexing a muscle that we don't do in the podcasting, we don't do in the wrestling, we don't do in MMA or corporate things or anything like that. So, I mean, if you, you will notice, I think almost every version of this is a different look <laughs> you know what i mean mm -hmm. as we're figuring out like okay how do we put everybody together how do we do it within the confines of of what we have technologically what you guys have at home and things like that um and and and, and what does that look like here right so and then how does that get presented for people hey look toddy's sleeping this Holy is one of, this, <laughs> this is this is, must have been one of the first well this, that's the first uh, episode yeah and she it was, this is the third one i think actually toddy oh, worked yeah. Was she working or something? It was like, yeah, yeah, she had she horrible had, hours. She had horrible yeah. work hours. And you could see no, right there in this video that she is just, when she didn't have to talk, yeah. she shut her eyes. Just she was take so a tired. Break. and But yeah. she she wanted it so bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She wanted this it. to work so bad that she was like mm -hmm. oh, that was the first one, missing yeah. sleep that she yeah. badly needed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, God bless. And yeah. then 
Absolutely. Tyler Tyler coming in, I think, is is an interesting it, it was kind of the glue that put us together because Tyler is so Tyler. Tyler mm. Tyler Klein is Tyler Klein, period. His characters uh, and and who he is, that that's who he is, but he's a damn good player and um really fun to just we, you know, with improv, the, you know, yes. so much of what we do is is improv. Being able to play off each other and be able to do it well. Mm-hmm. Um, bro, ha- bro had a great moment where Tati's character Hex, who is a uh, dragonborn uh, warlock, uh, killed uh, something, and uh, they were already dead. They were they were taken by a, a mind flare, and she was having a. He was having a panic attack. Hex, who is Tati's character, he was having a panic attack. And Bro's character, Duragon, who is a uh, Dragonborn barbarian, goes, they were dead already. You did them a favor. And it was just mm-hmm. a, a pipe bomb. Bro just dropped a pipe bomb on that campaign. And I was mm-hmm. like, hell yeah, let's yeah. go. <laughs> like you, I think a good – and there's a lot of different uh, – tabletop players there's the tabletop players that will speak as of their character in the third person mm-hmm. they'll mm-hmm. say connor will swing a sword um and then there's ones that will do it in first person which is all of us mm-hmm. we all play in first person which is pretty nice we'll we'll say you know like uh you'll just you'll just act it out yeah mm-hmm. and that's what we were doing it's basically when you when you watch top rope tabletop you know we really truly be, try to become our characters oh yeah you know and that that's what made it like we were so into it that when bro did say that, it was just like a light bulb and everything went off. It's like, oh, it makes sense. Yeah, he really did do him a favor. You know, we all just got, you know, he really, he, you know, if you have a love and passion for it, you just really feel it. You know, it's, as I think that's even with wrestling, that's what makes it uh, better. That's what c- can make it entertaining. You know, it's mm-hmm. kind of it's kind of like it's 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 a way for us to it, originally it was really just us trying to keep ourselves fresh during the quarantine mm-hmm. and see what happens. And it it's. You know, our Facebook page has skyrocketed in, in viewers. I think we're – like every show we do, we get more and more viewers mm-hmm. by like 200 to 400. To, I think we're like on average doubling yeah. VODs. Um, and it's just – it's super cool. And you wouldn't think it'd be entertaining. I watch some of our episodes. They're, they are entertaining. Yeah, yeah. Be, and and it's, it's because – the cool thing about all of us working in the scene together is we all have experience working with each other. We know each other's mm-hmm. tendencies, and there's there's a um, a camaraderie there. Mm-hmm. Speaking so. of, this is a good segue. Uh, speaking of what Tony just said, how we all have that com- camaraderie and we work together really well. Uh, one of the things that we've been talking about doing recently is we are to the point now where we're comfortable enough that we want to start bringing in guest players. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and this is one of the big points we wanted to hit tonight. Um, if any of you wrestlers out there, um, wrestlers, uh, ring announcers, referees, any you know anything, at any level, you know, um, you know, because we've actually reached out to some top tier, deep, some deep names that we don't want to mention names, right now. Like, like we don't want to mention. Name you guys wrestlers. were throwing around a name that was geeking me out. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. get her. I'm gonna be like over the moon right, on this right. thing. So yeah, yeah. Because top rope. T- I mean, top uh, tabletop players are there. You, you probably know so many of them. They just you just don't realize they do it. Yeah. But we're looking yeah. for guest players. So if you are interested, make sure you go to the top rope tabletop Facebook group and send us a message. And we will uh, at least take it into consideration. Yeah. But it, we think it'd, we think it would be pretty cool if we had like just guest roles. One, because it can give us more viewers, and two, it's more fun with more people. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> it, it throws a different spin uh, right. on even, things, right? Even mm-hmm. if you're a wrestler, like, and you you've never played uh, a tabletop game before, like Keith is is <laughs> a phenomenal game master. Mm-hmm. Um, we all, I think, can say that we're pretty experienced at this point playing this campaign, um, and, uh, and and we'll we'll work with you. Just be entertaining, just be fun. Mm-hmm. Um, make sure you uh, you bring the the, the fun. That, mm-hmm. that that's because this is this is just fun. This is uh, this is 
us just geeking out on Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. uh, plus Saturdays as wrestling shows are coming yeah. up and you guys right. are getting booked Fridays, again. Fridays. So yeah. that's been interesting. So. Friday nights, Sunday yeah. nights. Both, which which yeah. is another reason why we want to bring in guest uh, per performers or players because sometimes there's going to be wrestling bookings that some of our uh, cast members will have to will be mm -hmm. yes. traveling. So yeah. it gives us another person at the table. That's really, thankfully, like uh, I think, um, geez, almost everybody on the crew is getting bookings like out of state and everything yeah. now it, it really kind of warming up so mm -hmm. like it's kind of nice to see see that happen so fridays are looking like the date we've actually talked what was the date that in uh, in august that we talked about uh i think gosh. i think it was a friday or sunday it was a friday it, i think actually yeah. i think it's the sunday after 2pw yeah so i thought it was the uh the 29th so we're gonna have to advertise it to be the right a little bit, so <laughs> yeah friday the 29th of august will be our well, our next campaign is this friday this friday yes in three days and the one following, we're gonna try to plan them more, plan them out better because of everyone taking wrestling uh, with their wrestling bookings, um, so we can have a schedule laid out and everything. But the next one will probably probably be August 29th. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's a it's a good time, man. It's a good time. I mean, if you guys are like anyone who's watching arm. and listening to this, my God, the lighting in here makes my arm look amazing. Tricep. <laughs> 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 Holy, can I take that light? Home? Look at that. An arm. See, I G-rated that. I didn't say the word. Oh wow. Okay, I'm sorry. Go back. What were we talking about? I'm sorry. I'm mesmerized by your arm. Thank you. Um, I know. Jeez. Hell of flesh. Um, no, uh, you know, and if you're if you're listening to this, watching this, um, and you're like, what the hell are they talking about? Watch it. I mean, on, honestly, and and I I don't know, Sorg. Uh, do you have the mini on you by any chance? Do I have the what on me? The mini. The mini. Oh, oh, jeez, where is it? I think it's up there. <laughs> so, um, oh, actually, all your are, are, are up there. All our minis are. So I'll, um, I'll, I'll, I'll get we'll them. Get them. Well, there's we'll a picture on yeah, our. Uh, yeah. So but, wait, but, wait, hold on, pull it up. Yeah, yeah, we. But I mean, we all got personalized minis and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is, this has been. Uh, I think that planning and getting this together during the quarantine, um, was really helpful to kind of focus uh, us and keep us. I, oh, yes. I feel like this is something that never would have, with everybody's busy schedule yeah. going in, you know, before the quarantine. I don't think, I don't think it would have gone off the ground to the extent it would have been. Because I mean, not. you know, none of it, no, you, nobody would have had focus on it because mm -hmm. they've been everybody's focusing on wrestling life. You know, mm -hmm. you know, who knows what else, right? Yeah, but so. we we also talked about doing episodes like in the future breaking because a, a good campaign usually lasts between three and four hours i'd say mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we're talking about and like sorg me uh everyone else we're talking about doing like trying to break it down into episodes so they're more easier to watch to the average fan right you know someone doesn't know what they're doing may or what they're getting into you know maybe they can sit down for 45 minutes mm -hmm. as opposed mm -hmm. to four hours you know to know what's going mm -hmm. on that and we've um Recently gotten that 3D printer. Right. So once we get things squared away here, hopefully we're going to start pr uh, printing out some set pieces, we're, you know, and which we'll actually increase our production value. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so what we hopefully make some money. So here's the if you're on video, here's the uh, the mini figs. Uh, I mean, you can tell. Uh, you see, uh, th that's me in the purple uh, interviewing Keith as the dungeon manager master. Uh, so the dungeon badger. The, the dungeon, dungeon badger. badger. Dungeon badger. Uh, <laughs> no, the dungeon cat. Dungeon yeah. Cat, there you go. <laughs> so, and there's, uh, let's see, uh, the, the way, so actually, that's you guys on the end there. Yeah. Yep. Right? Uh, that's uh, Tony with the uh, guitar. And then. Uh, that's a lute. That's Gideon. Yeah. That's Gideon. Yes. <laughs> so. It's a lute. Yeah, get it right. And we'll pay the price. Uh, that, that's um, Connor. That's Connor. There's uh, Duragon, that's Bro's character in the middle. Okay. Uh, heck, I can never no. pronounce Tyler's. It's, uh, it's um, Eritros. Er Eritros. Mm -hmm. Eritros, and then uh, Hex. Um, which is Tati's character, Tyler's yeah. the purple, and um, I am Connor. The obviously. fun, the fun thing that we do <laughs> is, is all of us really have started getting into like adding bits of flavor in the studio, wearing ca character like pieces. Good call. Mm -hmm. Good call. Um, I'm yeah. actually looking for pieces that will match my mini. Same, yeah, same. Really? I'm looking, yeah, I like, I I'm looking for something. a damn loot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm there looking go. for a goddamn yeah. loot that's not seven hundred dollars. Yeah. You know how expensive loots are. Yeah, yeah. Oh no. I'm Wait, not looking he, for like. What was the one you came with before? It was like a little. Um, it was a little ukulele. It was like a. Yeah, yeah, it was like a Trolls World it. Tour yeah, ukulele. Yeah, and now I have a Spider-Man one. Can we just like bring Rand? Like I, I just recently <laughs> resurrected my old trombone from high school. So like, can I bring that in for you to play? I told you, man. Just decorate. 
made it painted. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. I think I think if this campaign goes south, we should all run a campaign where we're just a New Orleans funeral dirge through uh, <laughs> water deep, and we just are all bards playing instruments, uh, inspiring. Have each you? So, yeah. Go ahead, no, go ahead. Yeah. Have you played this campaign before? Water deep? No. Okay. So I'm just sure. wondering because we've had, we're seven episodes in. How many? I wonder how far we have to go. I mean. Uh, I mean, I guess it's, it, it all, it all depends on what, what Keith, Keith is doing. Yeah. Like, Keith, this is an involvement. The, th the cool thing about Dungeons & Dragons is yeah. it never truly wraps until the players go, yeah, let's move on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, Keith has a story that he's telling, and we are all part of the universe. Um, I know we've all developed backstories, so mm -hmm. they're pretty extensive. Mm -hmm. I, I don't – I know my backstory, and, and I think Keith knows all our backstories, but we haven't shared much – uh, Toddy, Toddy Hex Hex's character has the backstory has been revealed the most. Yeah, I've talked mm -hmm. with uh, Keith this week actually. Yeah, me too. and my uh, okay, okay, so maybe the same thing. So I I think our backstories will start uh, coming out. But Durgon yeah. has hinted a little bit to his, and and Tyler's has have has hinted to his uh, a little bit here and there. And Tyler's was actually his his backstory was more of a an interesting twist on his character design mm -hmm. that has made playing with him a literal wild card because Tyler built this character like I sometimes think he's just sitting in his head flipping the coin like do I want to actually play nice or just burn the whole motherfucker mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just just because I, Tyler Klein would enjoy watching shit burn. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Interesting personality stretch there. So, mm -hmm. uh, so Mike, I, I think you you had prepared something for our guest today. Is that right? Uh, yeah. And um, okay. here so we go. this is kind of a this is kind of a crazy happenstance because I uh, have never done D and D before. Mm -hmm. See, I'm shocked by that. Yeah, you... uh, I I did e it. That that was my release. Ah. From the show. I did e it. Um. I never did D and D because yeah. I, I didn't have people who would do D and D. I didn't know where to go for that or anything like it. So I wanted to make sure I kind of had an inkling to what you guys were going to be talking about. Um, I also listened to this other podcast called Fantastic Geeks, and this week they just so happened to do a D and D one hundred and one podcast. Mm, like, nice. like basically it was one co-host who's. Uh, um, Brizzy voices. She's on YouTube. She's, they're both uh, voice actresses and stuff like that. And um, she does D and D a lot. And her other co-host Tessa does not do D and D. So they spent a whole podcast making her character. Nice. And they had this site, D and D Beyond. Mm -hmm. So I made my own character. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'll ever play D and D, but it was fun making the character. And it was just like I'm a um, I, I decided to go a Asimir warlock. I don't even know if I'm saying that first word right. Asimir. Yeah, I don't know that. Uh, this is like I said. You mean Asimir? Did, I did completely just based off of this site. So mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so I don't know if I was doing it correctly. Now, does but... it show you? Did you were you able to create a? Uh... A picture? Like, can you create? Uh, well, they have pre pre pictures. I use D and D Beyond to keep all my stats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we we imported from Roll Twenty into D and D Beyond, um, which is probably the free advertising for Wizards of the Coast. Like, they fucking need it. But <laughs> <laughs> they uh, they're they're they own Dungeons and Dragons, and it lets you keep your character sheet and the old trope of the pen and pencil. And we still roll physical dice. We're yeah. we're not yeah. we're not barbarians over here. Yeah, we're yeah. still gonna roll physical <laughs> but dice. It's easy. It's nice to be able to just edit everything on your on your screen. Right. Yeah. See, and that's the one you when we play, you'll see that a lot of us, um, actually everyone but Bro, yeah, and Keith. Well, Keith, well Keith, Keith has one, but for different reasons. Well, yeah, Keith has all our stats all on D&D &D Beyond and, and Roll20, but most yeah. of us have, like, laptops or laptop, tablets. Yeah. And Bro's even moving towards keeping everything in Roll20 and just yeah. bringing in a printout. Yeah, yeah, so he's so, doing printout. He's still doing uh, paper. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, in addition to that, we keep notes. But you, yeah. So you created an Asimir. Uh What yes. class did you create? Um, Warlock. Interesting. Yeah, because I, I, I don't know what goes with what. I just read the descriptions, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'd want to be a warlock. I think, that, I, think, I think that might be one of your future guests here is Mad Mike with his new character. Well, yeah. the cool thing about, about Dungeons & Dragons is no race is bound to a class and mm -hmm. vice versa. Like, you can create whatever you want. Um, 
within the parameters of the rule set and the rule set is pretty flexible and even if it's not in the rule set if you have a dungeon master like <laughs> like bearcat who like rewards you for being creative like uh, at the christmas episode mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'll tell this story this is the one this is uh, before he says it uh, and I said so we just talked about this in the in the, our chat, our you know all of us. This is my favorite top rope tabletop tabletop story to date because it just well you'll hear it yeah. just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah. the, so the <laughs> holiday episode we did we were we were teleported to the North Pole the 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 Dungeons and Dragons version of the North Pole um, to save the Dungeons and Dragons version of Santa Claus. I love it already. <laughs> yeah, it um, he was taken by. Um, you should have seen our faces when we figured it out. The the uh, he like, was taken by by uh, Father Winter, like yeah. like the the evil version of Father Winter, and and so we had just finished finding a s snow golem. It was a snow. It was frosty. It was like it, it was, was literally frosty. frosty. It was a giant killer <laughs> frosty, and so we're beat up to hell because we're at low levels and we're not quite used to how to use our characters yet <laughs> tyler hasn't been hasn't joined the, the yeah. game yet so it's it's four people instead of five things are like we're struggling i'm the only healer no one knows distance Is this Ta one where hex got brain damage no no that was the that was <laughs> okay. the first one that she we're, we're she still paying died. for hex yeah. game brain damage no yeah. the second one i'm sorry second, second one okay. um but so we get teleported and uh we beat the the golem and we're beat up, tired, and and it's this campaign. It's like eleven o'clock, and we all have to like try to figure out how to get this wrapped up. So I pull a uh, black gate from Lord of the Rings, and I just yell at the door. Well, uh, before he says that, we're after we killed Frosty, we're right outside the castle, and we, and we have to go into the castle yeah. to and go through this labyrinth and maze of whatever Keith has set up to kick our ass. And so mm -hmm. Keith has prepared the inside, prepared like, the entire inside. He probably took hours to do this and prepare <laughs> the inside and unlock it. And then we battle our way through until we get to the bad guy. You and I I stare at the door and I look up at the tower of the castle and I go. Let us in, or I forget what I yelled, but that was it was some variation of the Aragorn, you know. Yeah. You want you, we want Santa Claus. Let us in. We're gonna do this. Open the fucking door. No, you said you said come out. Yeah. Oh, I did say come out. Like, I said come, come out. out and fight us. And, then, yeah. and Keith, Keith goes, goes <laughs> roll a charisma check. Natural 20, the highest you can do automatic success in most situations. Um, and he just goes, Screw shit. <laughs> Completely wrecked everything Keith had planned. Yeah, he just like teleports it. us into just right outside the door of the main chamber that we were going to have to fight to. So I skip an entire layer of the dungeon. It's like you entered the cheat code. Yeah, yeah it's basically so. what he did. I plugged the game shark in yeah. and went to 8-8. Eight, eight. But that's what's amazing about it's you're playing your own characters and you use what you have mm -hmm. to your advantage. Yeah. And yeah. he's like, can I do this? And Keith was like, well, I don't know. Can you roll to see if your charisma is good enough to where the guy was like, all right, mother effer, and, let's go. And the dice, <laughs> and the dice just let us do it. And it turned out <laughs> it was, it was a good thing. Cause like we were running out of, we were tired yeah. and it was the holidays and Tati was still on that awful schedule. Yeah, yeah. And so um, we would have been at least another hour and a half. At least another hour and a half. Yeah. But yeah. it was, it was just, but it was just a, like one of those, I'm so sorry, Keith's face. but not really. <laughs> yeah. Keith's face is like, okay. Okay, I guess we're doing this. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, and he, you know, Keith, anyone that knows Keith, he's the nicest guy. And he's just like, nicest okay, person. all right. But in his head, he's probably like, ah! You know, <laughs> you know but it's just so, it was just so, it was funny. Just Kincaid just completely kick the walls down he, he probably had like the 12 trials of christmas for you guys like you probably had yeah. to defeat like seven swans right and yeah, we just bypassed oh, all God. of it which Jeez. is fine but it's like but that's what's cool about ta uh, tabletop games is that can happen and so, the, even if the the uh the dungeon master makes plans and they're great at what they do and keeps one of the best but you st we're still players and we still have to use what's at our are, like, it can still go sideways and, and, still and, love sideways, and credit like credit to keith yeah because in a situation like that, I've had dungeon masters who have said, okay, roll for it, and you roll really high, and they go, I'm still not giving it to you because yeah. that wasn't my plan. Yeah, and you're like, Keith, mm -hmm. to the credit of our dungeon master, thank God, mm -hmm. <laughs> let me skip 
three yeah. levels, at, including the water level of Super Mario Brothers, which I'm very <laughs> thankful for because no one likes the water level of Super right. Mario Brothers. Yeah, it's, just, uh, it's like because if he doesn't let it happen, then it's like, wow, this is rigged. You yeah, know what I mean? Right, it's like, right. and, and Keith has been very um, <clears throat> lenient in letting us not mm. only explore our characters, but every once in a while, let us do these really cool, sh- uh, you know, mm-hmm. things that that look awesome, like uh, Hex blowing a hole through the uh, Beholder last yeah. show. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. and, and there's also like, one of my favorites. There's a plush Beholder. Yeah. Oh yeah, the purple plush well. beholder. Purple plush beholder that 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 uh, she covets a little bit. So that uh, Tyler wants to uh, steal. Yes, for yes. some reason. It's, it's it's hilarious. It's hilarious that like you, me, and Tyler, like our characters, we are the most opposite human beings. Connor and Gideon have become like these pseudo like best friends yeah. where yeah. they're just like yeah. they're like they're like drinking buddies and they don't know how they ended up there, but they, they yeah. see each other at the bar every Friday and they just drink yeah. together. I don't even know his name. I just call him Bard. Yeah. Like I know his name, but I I, I always I, I since the beginning I just start calling him Bard. Yeah. And it's yeah, I what I what I say is this like um you're my best friend, yeah. but I'm not, I'm not your best friend. <laughs> yeah, like, like, I look at you. He's my best friend, the bard. I'm like, like, you're nope. not my best friend. No, you stop t- calling me that. It's so. a well, one-way street. T- <laughs> top rope tabletop this Friday. Probably about 7 o'clock start, 7.30 start. Yeah. Okay, more or less. I'll be on the IndieWrestling.us, Facebook, Twitch. Um, I think we throw it on the YouTube as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, watch out for that. We actually stopped the wrestling. We stopped the wrestling on the 24-7 feed to do the show. So mm. <laughs> so uh, go tune in for that. It's a lot of fun. I hope to see a lot of you guys in the chat room. Fun fact, Tina in the chat room is 20 minutes away from uh, Wiz- Wizards of the Coast headquarters. I've always liked, wanted to go there and yell at the uh, the Magic the Gathering people because they <laughs> fucked their game up so bad. <laughs> <laughs> 